Oh, there she is. I'm liking it, Suzuki. Thank you, Shriver, for letting me take this out today. They have a whole slew of bikes that you can ride here. But let's concentrate on the V-Strom, the 1050 XT. This is the XT. What do you get with the XT? You get the engine guard, engine covers. I love that bronze look in the sun. And way up in there, too, you can see. Uh, and what's new, they've moved the oil cooler down here. I hope the GoPro can get that. And also the uh, radiator, I think, is 15% bigger. Uh, what else do you is do you get with the XT first of all yeah the uh, spoked wheels and also the hand guards so those five basic things uh, and also um, the electronic suite with the six axis IMU you're getting all these extra stuff with the IMU and also new this year not just with the xt is the separate seats and also this is adjustable 20 mils and right now it's at 850 it can go all the way up to the 870 mils spot there also i like this rack ah, let's get on let's get on the bike and start riding Hi guys, nothing to prove here. Today's a beautiful day, because any day one can be out on two wheels is a beautiful day. And today actually is a beautiful day too. <laughs> so it's a double bonus here. And I'm on the Suzuki V-Strom. Yeah, the 1050, not just any 1050, as you saw in the intro there, the XT. And we'll be going over the other differences to what's the difference between the XT and also last year's model, the 2019, the outgoing 2019. And first impressions, uh, without taking into account that this is 14, 15K, right away, I felt at home on this bike. I'm loving this bike. Let's go ahead and get straight into the numbers and the motor. Let me come around here and let's talk about this motor that they did some work on this year. Uh, but I am liking this nice color combo with this XT. That is looking good. Uh, 107 ponies at uh, right at uh, 8,500 RPMs, whereas the outgoing model, it's uh, 99 right at eight grand. So they upped the power just a little bit. Uh, but the torque is at 77 foot-pounds of torque uh, at 6K. That's what's important. Liking that torque at 6K. Well, actually at 3K, it really started to come on. That was good. Paired with this tr uh, cassette style transmission, no complaints. Let's take a look and see how this powertrain feels on the street. So how is this powertrain? <laughs> you, you, the, the engine and transmission are perfect together. <laughs> you don't need a, a clutch lever once you uh, once you start going and and the power delivery is just so smooth even even at lower rpms now let's flip her down to three there at three grand it starts to come on pretty good but uh shifting on this thing is is piece of cake it takes no thought whatsoever and and uh, I, I just thought of there over there I just went up without a clutch I, I'm not even thinking about it uh, this seat is comfortable I'm liking this seat and the wind protection ergonomically speaking the seat oh, I could be on this thing all day long this is comfortable Thank you, Suzuki, for making an adventure bike that doesn't have a hard seat. <laughs> there. <laughs> a lot of adventure bikes have hard seats. This does not. Uh, but overall, for this powertrain, there, see, I just used the clutch to go down. Uh, and, but for this powertrain, two thumbs up. I, I'm liking this this motor, this torquey motor. It is a torque monster for a, a thousand. What is it? A thousand thirty-four cc, something like that. 
I am liking this. No complaints whatsoever on this powertrain. Okay guys, let's go ahead and get right into the chassis, shall we? With this fully adjustable suspension, manually of course, for this price you're not going to get an electronic suspension. My one concern is calling this an adventure bike and only having 160 millimeters of front travel here. That's a, a concern there. Uh, and these Tokiko brakes, four piston on 310 discs. No complaints with fully adjustable front brake lever, great. Uh, and the rear preload remote is right here. You can see right there, you can adjust that. I always love the, if it's, if it's not electronic, give me a remote, and then it's easy. But one thing I did notice on here, whereas you guys in the States, North America, will get the Nissans on the back two piston, this is only a one Tokiko. Hmm. Why? Why, Suzuki? And the feel of that brake was kind of vague, uh, but let me show you something else that's changed this year's model. You get, a, you get a fatter, wider, more rubber uh, foot peg here, and you can also pull this out in a heartbeat. And this also looks more like for off-road also. Um, I don't know why you would want to do some off-road with this bike. It's really for a, more of a road biased. And Suzuki say that too. They say, yeah, we'll, we'll be honest. Gravel roads is really all you want to do with this bike because it's a 19-inch front and 17-inch rear. But that 19 implies a little bit more ability. Now, how did this chassis, or how does this chassis feel on the street? Let's take a look. So how is this thing standing up? Wow, well, it's not too bad. It's okay. It's easier than I thought it would be. Don't really need to stand up here. Well, maybe a little bit. Yeah, you can do some off-road with this. Hmm, I'm surprised. Hmm, interesting. I am really surprised. Now the chassis, how does this feel? Uh, this is smooth and, and for an adventure bike, the turn-in is good. For a heavyweight adventure bike, the turn-in is very, very good. You do, I'm not even thinking about this in here. I'm just going to leave it in the gear, in fourth gear here, and just torque my way. See, it's spinning at 2,500 RPMs, and just torque my way out. Look there. Oh, yeah, look at that. Nice torque delivery. Yeah. <laughs> and, but, uh... You don't even think about it. I don't think I would adjust this this uh, suspension whatsoever if I had to, if I if I bought it. I think I would leave it. Maybe the preload a little bit less, but uh, as far as the front dive, it's very little, minimum. Oh, that's an excellent front brake. Oh yeah, loving that front brake. And the rear brake, I didn't like at first, but this bike only had five kilometers on it once I took it out. So, but the more I use the rear brake, the better it's getting. Here, let's try the rear brake. Oh yeah. I couldn't tell that it was gonna lock up there. Hmm. But the feel, it, it's, it's getting there. It's getting better and better. So no complaints about the rear brake and definitely no complaints about the front brake uh, and i'm not even considering the price point of this bike guys the, these are good brakes not for the money just flat out good brakes sure they're they're not your your brembos no uh, but hey <laughs> you know for 14k i'm not going to say one word about them so as far as the chassis, the suspension and brakes, two thumbs up, boom, boom. Good job, Suzuki. 
and you can carve these corners no problem just now look at this t this LCD in the Sun that's pretty good it, it lights up even more in the Sun that's good hmm still this monochrome color see now it should start to get dark yeah see it's already starting to get dark there it's dark again <laughs> so you can see how they're lighting it up in the sun and darkening it down dimming it down in, in the shade so that's I like that even though I don't like the overall TFT or LCD Now coming back here guys, let's take a look at the rest of this bike. And this style from here on back, it's reminiscent of the 1988 DR model, the off-road Suzuki uh, model. Especially with this, which is new this year, also this two-piece seat here. And also you can see I like how they have eliminated the luggage racks extensors and now it's just like this, which a lot of OEMs are getting also to are getting away from the racks hanging down and just clip on right there that's great and that's great and nice i'm liking that and this high rack uh all aluminum nice solid feel uh to this it, it really f feels good to it coming up on this 850 millimeters off the ground seat you can come up an extra 20 if you want also, you can get a uh, buy the optional lower seat, which will drop it down another 20 or 30 mils. Gas tank, 20 liters. Thank you, Suzuki, for giving us a decent gas tank here uh, for a heavyweight adventure bike. You should be able to get good range on this. With this tank full, it's at 247 kilos. For the XT, if you don't get the XT, then it's 236 because, you know, you have your extra things like the center stand, the engine guards, etc. Now, let's go up to the handlebar here. Oh, but first, how does this weight feel in the city? Now, these in-town manners, uh, it feels lighter than any of the other. It feels like an Africa Twin there or you could say what does it feel like an africa twin maybe a little yeah about equivalent to the africa twin lighter than the gs lighter than the uh the super adventure lighter than the because the super adventure has its weight up high uh and lighter definitely lighter than, than the than the tiger 1200 that's a that's a beast with its weight up high uh, but in town, the overall, the ergonomics, uh, and the ease, I, I, I get nothing. I'm trying to find something here in the throttle, and I get nothing. It's nothing but smoothness. <laughs> it says, oh, you want to be a jerk? I won't. I'm going to be smooth back to you. <laughs> That's what it says. <laughs> now, let's come up here to the handlebar. This handlebar is all new this year. It's higher, wider, and so that supposedly that you can stand up easier on. Um, standing up is okay. It's not something I would want to do a lot on this bike. Uh, but here we have the controls. Here is where you control your molds, your ride modes, your traction control settings, and your ABS settings here. And your standard controls over here along with your cruise control there. Now, my one complaint about this bike for 14, 15K range, give me a TFT with some sort of connectivity. Although we have seen that a lot of your Japanese OEMs shy away from connectivity or are, in my humble opinion, a little behind the European brands, BMW, Triumph, KTM, etc. But they're getting there. Uh, and this LCD mono display, hmm. Give me something a little bit better, although it does have a round RPM gauge uh, where you can control your ride modes, your traction control, and your ABS that you see there. Although a good fuel gauge there, that's good. Um, overall, I, my only complaint now considering the price would be give me a TFT and also some connectivity. 
um, would be quite honest with you for that kind of money because there are some middleweight adventure bikes and naked bikes that get TFTs that are way below this price so it just depends um, overall how would I rate this bike it, without considering cost I'd give it a thumb and a half uh, but now that I'm considering cost it's two thumbs way way up hands down this motor is so refined uh, I, w I was expecting more vibration in this 90 degree V twin uh, than it gave me and Suzuki worked on that this year uh, with new rubber mounts in the handlebar and also in the feet and so they're working on that vibration and I really felt it that was good thank you Suzuki for refining this motor even more uh, it sounded like a v-twin and had the torque of a v-twin but it didn't it was missing a lot notice I'm not saying all but a lot of the vibration that a lot of v-twins have ie Ducati Aprilia etc um, so overall guys if you guys are looking to get into the heavyweight adventure group and you're not going to do any really off-road or maybe just light gravel roads and you want to save a buck consider this bike take it out for a test ride don't take my word for it do it take it for a test spin uh, the wind protection and everything on this I was really impressed uh, with this well you should be with a heavyweight uh, adventure bike anyway you should have good wind protection and this does no surprises there in the low position uh, oh and this is something this bar here a lot of you may have seen that and said oh what is that bar that's an accessory bar mount your GPS cell phone anything to it's good solid it's it's solid uh, steel or aluminum coming up here and on this I have my fingernail let's scratch it like that uh, it's a good solid bar to mount something on if you want uh, but thank you for doing that Suzuki that's a good idea although I'm more mounting to the handlebar and lower and not above in my line of sight anywhere overall two thumbs way way up Suzuki all right guys I hope you've enjoyed this review as always guys ride safe that's the most important thing ride safe and number two guys ride like there's nothing to prove and get out and enjoy this weather enjoy the ride guys Thank you, Suzuki. I was pleasantly surprised. Hmm. I would buy this bike if I were in the market for a heavyweight adventure bike. I would seriously consider this, especially for 14 grand.